Good morning. Welcome to the Bond Sunday morning meetings. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Uh, if you'd like to get involved with the conversation, you can call 800-411-BOND, 800-411-2663, or go to our email and email us, church at bondinfo.org, church at bondinfo.org, and put your name in town, and I can answer your question today if you like, all right? Appreciate you being there. Good morning to you guys. How are you? Hanging in there. Good. Yeah, life is good. I uh, did you guys see the show the other night? Some of you did, I know already. Yeah, it was fun. I learned a lot from that show. Uh, I'm sorry. That one lady was too much. Oh yeah, just mouthy, <laughs> whole lot of mouth. But uh, it was good. I, I had a good time. I got um, amazing response from being on Sean's show the other night. Uh, lots of good stuff, but of course some negative, negative stuff from mostly black people. And, uh, but I, I love it. I like the challenge. One thing I like about life is that I realize that every time I endure something and overcome it without being angry, I get better in life. It's like there's something amazing about that, magical about it. But whenever you cow down to situations in life by becoming angry, you lose out. It's, it's, um, it's interesting that God has it set up like that. You know, I don't know what he was thinking. Because a lot of people miss it. They, you know, they, they don't know that that's what the secret is to life. And their first thing is to get angry. And when you get angry, it looks like you don't have another choice in life. You notice that? You notice how when you become angry at a situation, it seems as though you're now helpless to it. There's no way out. And you start kind of going downhill. You start thinking about it more. And it gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, but when you don't become angry about it, and as of this day, and I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring in the next moment, but for the last 20 years, I've just discovered not to be angry about it. And uh, it's done. It's over with. And, and, and a lot of people are missing that. I had so many black people call me up about that discussion we were having, and they said, <laughs> I had a preacher to tell me yesterday, someone I know very well, uh, uh, he said, I heard that he was on, we were on TV bringing down the black man. And he said it with anger, you know, bringing down the black man. And this was a preacher who said this, and I felt a, a sense of disappointment in that he is so focused on the color and the character doesn't even register. And I find that with a lot of black people is they don't get it's not about the color at all. I mean, it just, it's just ridiculous to think of it in that way. It's about the character. And when I tell them what, uh, what this man is into, you know, about what he supports, they say, no, that's not true. You know, I haven't heard that. Or if they find out that it's true, they say, well, everybody does it. He has to do it. There's no, for some reason, there is no, there's, I, I think I know why, but there's no real connection with character. And Dr. King said that one day we should be judged by that because really that's all you have. If you lack character, you have nothing. You absolutely have nothing. And most people, they're so angry and out of it and dumbed down, they don't connect with that character. Isn't that amazing? And, uh, and, and I know that they're not going to be able to do it until they overcome their anger, until they forgive because it separates you from the light that develops your character. In darkness, you have no character. But in the light, you develop that character by dealing with light. And so I realized that um, uh, um, a lot of people just don't have it because they're so disconnected from it and focus on the color or the gender or the person. Uh, we also talked about a lot of, some of the colleges have made a pornographic film. Did you hear about that? And they are taken around to different schools, uh, 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 allowing the kids to see it, you know, intentionally causing them to see it. And we discussed that. I don't know what that girl said about it. It was dumb or whatever she said. But I realized the reason they are teaching these kids about sex before time, because you corrupt them. And when you corrupt a person, you can control that person. And so if they can corrupt them at such an early age, they're going to grow up, become little Democrats. And they're going to support same-sex marriage and abortion. 
and all that because they have been corrupted and they can identify with it. And that's what it's all about. It's about corrupting them at an early age so that you can control them. <laughs> that's what they did with, with black Americans. They corrupted black folks 50 years ago and they sat them on the plantation of the Democratic Party and now all they do is sit them there. And they just tell them it's okay, you can be angry, you can be immoral, you don't have to be responsible, it's a white man's fault, we, we give you this. And they're just totally okay with it because they have been corrupt. They don't really see what's going on. And that's amazing to me that it could be like that. You know, that you could be so angry and blind that um, you can't see what you're doing. And the one thing I want all of you to understand, you got to learn how to deal with pressure because it's given to you by God because he loves you and he want to help you out. He want to bring you into the light. And if you don't have that pressure, there's no other way to come into it. It's the pain that brings you into it. All right. And then you have to be uh, uh, conscious enough to see how this pressure is brought on you. And because sometimes friends and family members would put pressure on you, too in order to control you. When I was in New York, um, I was referred to a family for counseling while there. And I'm glad it happened in New York so you guys don't know who it is. Um, and the daughter is about 37, 38 years old. And her mother, they're all Christian, Christian folks, right? Her, uh, her mother is forced to take care of her mother you get that picture? The, the girl's grandmother, all right? And so the mother is stuck with taking care of the, uh, her mother, the girl's grandmother, because the mother is ill. The grandmother is ill, right? And the mother doesn't want to be there. She want to not be there, but she is uh, so subject to her, the, you know, her mother that she is forced to be there. And so the mother calls the daughter up, according to what I've been told, and say, hey, I, I want to leave. I need to go and do something. I want you to come and stay with your mother, with your grandmother, until I come back. <laughs> and the daughter's like, no, I, I can't do that. I, I got a life. I got things to do. You know, I have to work. I, I, I can't take off for a week and do it. And the mother, you know, just got in on the daughter. Yeah, you can do it. You know, blah, blah, blah. You can take off and work. You can come down. And the, and the daughter's like, no, I can't do it. I just, it's a bad time, you know, take her with you or something like that. Get a nurse or do something. And then the mother uh, became angry because the daughter didn't give in to her. And so she called the daughter's job and told the daughter's boss, I need, I need my daughter to go and take her of her grandmother. She's going to take off and work for a week. And, and, and the daughter is just stressed out because now the daughter is angry about what's happening because this person is going against her will. Now, this is a, a woman that's 38 years old. It's not like a teenager or something, right? And so the daughter is like totally stressed out now because mama is forcing her to do it. They called a job, got her off work and everything. <laughs> and, um, and so they, they brought him over so I can counsel with them. And you could just see the stress of the daughter. She had a headache. She was just out of it. I mean, just because now she's going down to take care of her grandmother unwillingly just didn't want to go because what, ha what the mother did when being nice to the daughter didn't work, she started to attack her. You're selfish. You only think of yourself. You know, how can you do this? You're supposed to show your mother, your grandmother love. I mean, you're just making her feel guilty that way. <laughs> and the daughter caved in and I can see the stress on her just out of it because now anybody have been in that position? Now you're about to do something that you just simply don't want to do. But your mother have you doing it. You're feeling guilty about not doing it. And now you got to do it. That's a bad way to live. When someone can put that kind of guilt on you and uh, make you do something you don't want to do. So I said to the daughter, I said, look, you don't want to do this. You don't have to. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Just tell your mother, I'm not doing it. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. You have to figure out something else. I can't do it. And the daughter uh, mustered up enough courage to do it. And she said to the mother, I'm not doing it. I don't want to do it. You're making me do it. You can't call my job and get me off work and make me do something I don't want to do. 
And the moment the daughter started to speak up, right away the headache faded away. She became alive. Life, you know, she felt better right away. And, and just, I mean, and then she just opened up and just dumped off everything. And, but my point to all that is that when you allow yourself to be manipulated and you become angry, you start to lose out. You really do. You got to learn that anger is not your friend. It enslaves you. It brings on fear and doubt. And, and you'll find that you know, the people who are the closest to you, they're they the ones who will start to take control of your life. They will manipulate you and take advantage of your life. <laughs> and you got to learn to operate without anger. You got to learn so that you, don't, you can have the strength and the courage to stand up for what is right. When I was doing that debate the other night, prior, the day before going on there to do the debate, I knew, you know, we went over what the subject matter was going to be. And right away, my thoughts started working with me, telling me what to say, how to say it, how you're going to respond. And I just stood back and watched how he was talking to me, telling me what to say, right? And I even went to bed that night, and um, while I was sleeping, I could just hear it in my head talking to me, telling me how to respond and what to say. But I knew that the best way to do it, you know what the subject matter is, but do not pre-plan what you're going to say. And so when I went on that show... I was totally empty of, of uh, a plan, no plan at all. And I went there in perfect relaxation. And I absolutely had a ball. I allowed the answers to come when the questions were asked and when the discussion happened. And I'm telling you guys, that is like, it's a perfect way of living because there is no plan, there is no fear, there is no doubt, there is no anger. And there is a willingness to be embarrassed you know, because the embarrassment can kill the ego if you allow it to happen. And so when you get over anger, when you're willing to speak up, when you don't have an agenda, but just deal with life, you can live. That's when you can live. Getting mad about things is not the right way to go. Because once you become angry at one situation, then you're not prepared for the next situation. And it comes and it overtakes you. And you find yourself just going down here with fear and doubt and worry and everything else. Have you noticed that? You got to go the other way. This route of anger is not the right way to go. You got to let go. And this is not like just a fancy saying. You know, God, if you read the Bible, God has laid out a simple way of living. It's an easy plan. He said that when you have problems with your brother, go to the person. <laughs> Have you noticed that? He said, do not resent them, but go to them, whether it's at work or with family members or relationship. Talk it over with the person. And you'll find that when you talk it over, it's done. It is absolutely over. But if you don't, then you lay down on it and you wake up mad the next day. And that's what has happened to black people. 50 years of anger has totally blinded them. They don't even concentrate on character. It's not even a part of the thinking process. And when you're angry, that's what happens. You lose the value of life and you become dirty and nasty and anything goes. It really does. And God laid it out. Forgive, go to the brother, forgive the brother. They know not what they do, or sister. They know not what they do. Our battle is a uh, spiritual battle. I was talking to a friend of mine, then I'll take your hands. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, a good friend. It was his 81st birthday. So I called him up to say happy birthday. And he told me, he said, you know, I've really discovered what Jesus was all about. You know, I'm just, I know now even more so. And then he was telling me, he said that I was outside of my house the other day and I was looking at this um, a satellite. You know how you put those satellites on your roof? Yeah. And then it just kind of sit there with open arms and wide mouth, saying nothing but just, Listening? Have you noticed that? <laughs> you know how to sound like just sit on your house like that, right? <laughs> you ever seen that? Yeah. It's a round thing. This is a sound like this. Right. Thank you, man. Sound like this. And it's all open, right? It just sit there and it does nothing. But yet, all this unseen information is coming down into it. it from somewhere that you, and you can't feel it. You can't even see the information coming from out yonder somewhere. Isn't that right? Or can, are you able to see that? No. Right. But you got all these different wavelengths uh, coming in from somewhere, right? 
bringing down information into this thing to just sit there. And um, he reminded me, he said, that's how it is when you don't have any anger. It's like your heart, it just opened up. Your mind is opened up. And all this information is coming into you from nowhere. And it just creating a wise and healthy and happy and peaceful and formative person. And that is so true. When he said that to me, we had church just in that, those few words. Because that is absolutely true. When you don't have anger, you're an open satellite for information of goodness to come in and guide every aspect of your life. But when you have anger, you, shut, you close it down. And this information that's coming from out of nowhere cannot enter in because now you are locked into darkness and you're being deceived and guided by a different source. And uh, but when you open up, folks, by forgiving, that's when the truth can come in and guide you. You totally let go. You just sit there like a satellite and live, live your life. God said of ourselves, we could do nothing. We are nothing. We know nothing. So if you can learn the simple principles of forgiving in your heart, not just with words, speaking up. If you have a problem with someone, go to that person and face it. Then you get over it. It's just that easy. And then, and then you can live your life in a way that no one else can even understand. They can't understand it. When I was on that show talking about politics and stuff, I was surprised that I knew how to even respond about that stuff. Because most of the time you have to go to school and learn it. And you have all these fancy words you have to say. And then, you know, you have to be an intellectual kind of a person. But this information coming in from nowhere, because I'm an open person to it, he will guide you what to do. It's, a, it's no effort. But it is absolutely fun. It really is. But you got to keep up with life. You notice that? It's like your house. If you don't clean your house, and speaking of cleaning house, we have a home for young men. And... We have a couple of black guys in the house that don't like to clean. I mean, just, they like junky house. And we've been telling them over and over and over again, they got to clean. They got to keep your room clean. You got to wash your dishes. You got. And so one of the guys I was telling him yesterday, I said, look, I've told you over and over again, you got to clean your room. I am not going to accept anything less. And he said to me, well, I pay rent. And I shouldn't have to clean my room if I don't want to. I should be able to do what I want. I pay rent. And I said, you know what? That is a good point. <laughs> I said, you are absolutely right about that. You pay rent, you shouldn't have to clean your room. I said, well, you know what? But the rules here are different. So if you, don't want, if you want to pay rent and don't have to clean, you got to move. I said, you, you're not going to be able to live here. Because here, you're going to have to be clean. Because that's what we we're doing and teaching you guys how to be responsible and you know, stuff. So, but you're right about that. I'm not mad at you about it. You have a right to live just how you want to live, but you can't do it here. And he became angry about that, right? I said, there's no need to be angry. Why be angry about something you want to do? And why should I be angry at you because you want to do it? You just can't do it here. That's all I'm saying. And then I noticed that he went out and got a, one of those rental magazine things to tell you about where, how to find an apartment for rent. And he was trying to sneak and look for it. I said, look, why are you hiding this? You don't have to hide. I'll help you find a place. I'll ask around. Tell me what you're looking for. <laughs> there is no reason to be mad about wanting to move because you want a junky room. And, and I'll help you find it. But what I realized about that is when you're angry, it makes you see things in a different way. It, it, it took away his ability to know he has a right to live in a dirty place. He has a right to move if he's not happy in that environment. He need to go, but his anger, it, it brought a sense of shame up onto my guest. I don't know, when you're angry, you tend, you tend to want to hide and do your stuff. You know what I mean? You know, he think he has to sneak and do it because he's angry. Whereas if he wasn't angry, he would openly look for the place. He would ask for help. He would say this and this. So I say, if you drop your anger, you would see you don't need to hide. You are a grown man. You have a right to do what you want. And I have a right to request what I want. And so let the anger go. And then he starts smiling and saying, oh, yeah, will you help me find one? I'm like, yeah, I'll help you find one right away. No problem. And I use that example to let you know that stay away from anger. 
It is not your friend. It put you in a situation that you don't need to be in in life. And Christ came so that we could be a free people, a moral people, upright people, because in that is life and it's healthy and it's good and it's freedom. And, and you look at the people around you, they're going through it because they're angry and sick and diseased and out of it. And they're embarrassed by some of the dumbest stuff. You know, they are afraid. And that's because of the anger. And it's like Christ wasted his time. Well, he didn't waste his time because he said only a few people are going to find that way. And the majority will never, ever find it. So he, he's getting the ones that he wanted to have on ship with him. But I'm glad that I'm one of the ones that are on board because I absolutely have an angry, anger-free life. And people, I make a lot of jokes, and people get mad at me about nothing. They trip out over nothing. I see people with anger on the run. They're constantly running because they can't face anything. It just run from one thing to another. And so get over the anger. You don't have to live an angry life at all. You don't have to have fear. You don't have to have doubt. You don't have to be sick and out and broke and out of it. You don't have to be controlled by your fellow man. You really don't. I was talking to a father the other day. He was telling me about uh, uh, how his wife um, is destroying his child by just filling his head with all this unnecessary stuff that kids don't even need to hear at such a young age, trying to turn the kids against his child against him. And she's just deliberately feeding the child all this negative stuff. I mean, just grown up stuff that they don't even need to know about. But she is intentionally doing it. And then she go to church and lift up holy hands, pray, can quote the Bible until the cows come home. I mean, but yeah, teaching that anger to her child. Isn't that amazing? This battle is a spiritual battle. It is a battle between good and evil. It has nothing to do with the physical. It really doesn't, folks. And if you can understand that, you'll wake up and when you look at folks, you'll see the evil in them and you would know that it's not them. And then that helps you and prevent you from being angry at them or taking it personal. Isn't that amazing? I, I, I have a good life. And not because of what I do and the things that I have, but because I have perfect peace, I can see. I, I am open up so those waves can come in and just change my life all the time. Really, I am. I don't know what the next moment is going to bring, how I'm going to handle it. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But as of this moment, I'm a free man. And it's been like that for 20 years. And it's getting better and better and better and better and better. Because I understand this is evil that we're dealing with. We have evil people and good people. And every challenge gives us an opportunity to come closer to, to what is right. Anyway, yes, sir. Thanks for your patience, sir. Thank you. Um, My question is, do you guys understand about anger and do you still have it? That's what I'd like to know. Yes, sir. Um, on TV, um, it may not be proper to read this, but I have found um, a chapter of scripture that deals specifically with anger from the uh, directly from the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that, what is that focuses and concentrates on it and, and, and enlightens you about the severity and, and, and the uh, of of anger, and, and that it is the primary sin that allows all other sin to come in. It really is, folks. Anger is the primary sin that allows all other sins to enter into you. And the weird thing about it, you're mad at people that got problems. You know, it's not like you're mad at good people. You're mad at other bad people, other angry people, other people who have issues in your family, in your relationships, in your working environment. It's, it's dumb. It's like you got... Two mad people mad at each other. For instance, if this young man at the, at the house would not have been angry about having to be clean, he would have seen that he agreed when he came in <laughs> to obey the rules. Yeah. And so if he wouldn't have been angry, his honor would have kept him 
to clean, to keep it That's clean, right. even though he didn't like it, and then look for a place else to live because he wants to be dirty. That's right. That's why I say that 99.9.999.9% of people are liars. They're liars. 99.9.999% of people are liars. That sounds like the exact percentage of people who are angry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is. Angry people are liars. When they give you their word, they absolutely don't mean it. Because as soon as a disagreement comes along, or a situation comes along, they change on you just like that. They're liars. Absolutely liars. 99.9. That's why God said don't have faith in, in mankind. Do not have faith in humankind because they will turn on you just like that. They'll grin up at you. Do you promise to pay rent? Yes. Okay, son. Do you promise to keep the place clean? Yes. Do you promise to, whatever, turn on the alarm? Yes. Do you promise to pay your rent on time? Yes. Just lying. Absolute liar. They'll go to a job and they'll get a job. And during the interview, they'll just lie to the person that's interviewing them. You promise to be on time? Yes. You promise to work for $8 an hour? Yes. And we be on time for $8 an hour? Yes. Do you promise to work hard for $8 an hour? Yes. Do you promise this and that? Yes. And they'll sign that application, and in a week, they lay, they come and have work, they are complaining. I mean, just liars. Absolute liars. And then you put your faith in them. Isn't that amazing? And then when they let you down, you blame them for letting you down. And I'm about to tell you, you put your faith in them. You put your faith in them. You get married and you lie to the preacher. You invite all these folks to your wedding. The preacher stand there with the Bible. Do you promise to love and obey and uphold and do the right thing and never cheat? Don't become angry. Uh, be strong. Yes. <laughs> I promise in the name of Jesus. And then the night after the honeymoon is over, you fighting and lying to each other. The night, I know people who, I mean, right after the honeymoon, they were at it. Just lie. They lie right and doing the word. Most people are liars. Your mama lie. Your daddy lie. Your children lie. Your cousins lie. The preacher lie. Just liars. Isn't that amazing? All in the name of Jesus. Character doesn't matter. It don't matter at all. And it's because of that anger. When you're angry, you can't help but be a liar. How are you going to keep your word? You're an angry person. When the little pressure comes, you got to bow down. You got to run. You got to scream. You got to deny. I have a, one of my daughters. And you guys don't know all my daughters. I have a whole lot of them. <laughs> I love her dearly. She is in such denial, and then I'll tell her about it. She'll say, I'm not in denial, right? But anytime a little truth, just go there, even if it's a lie. She defended it right away. I'm like, won't you shut up and let it penetrate so that you can see? You got to let this stuff hit you, and if it doesn't hurt, then it's okay. But if it hurts, it's the truth. So let yourself hurt so you can get over it. Why run away from the hurt? You need the pain so you can cry out to God to get better. No pain, no gain. You know what I mean? You got to take, you don't, but you'll learn. Keep on living. The ego is the one that don't want to feel the pain of truth. You know, if you're embarrassed, let's say you're embarrassed to, to face a crowd. Get in front of the crowd and let yourself be embarrassed. And just let yourself feel the pain of being embarrassed and see what happens. See how your life change. It really will change. But you got to let yourself go through the pain. No pain, no gain. Where is that scripture that talks about that? Well, it's lengthy, but it's very informative. But what, what, what is? It's in the book of uh, Hermes. Oh, okay. Make sure you guys read that. The whole book. No, just uh, Command 5. All right. I don't even have it in my mind. 
What kind of Bible? Is, what kind of Bible are you read, buddy? Is it Jewish Bible? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. It's the it's the left out books of the Bible. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's left out for a reason. I I can see why they left this out. Yeah. If you want to be free, you gotta let your anger go. And you know you have anger because you give in to the stresses of life. Well, when you don't have anger, you cannot give in to the stress. It is about character, and it's not about anything else but that. And that's how, that's how Jesus became great. He didn't give in to that stuff. He was never mad about anything. He didn't think about the color. It was about the heart. That's why Dr. King has such an effect on society. Gandhi had a great effect on society because they said, don't be angry. Don't be mad. It's about character. They understood that principle. Just don't be mad. Just don't be mad. Let anger pass. Now, for those who have it, you're going to have it. And so when that situation comes, it's going to awaken that anger inside of you. But let yourself feel it. Don't deny it. Don't, don't start yelling and don't curse the person out. Don't regret that they make you feel angry. Because if it wasn't in there, they couldn't bring it out of you. And so they're giving you an opportunity to bring it out of you so you can overcome it. You should be shaking their hands and giving them money for doing it. Thank you for making me mad. Here's $100. Because they've done you a favor. Even if they were trying to hurt you. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. Were you done? I, I was. I, I was going to talk about preachers. Oh. Uh, well, let's come back to that. All right. Yes, sir. Um, I just, I, I kind of want, it's kind of more of a, of a testimony. Um, I just, I feel that, um, one, God is, is working in my life now to show me that, I, you know, that I'm angry and that I'm a liar. Yeah. And, uh, all angry people are liars. Because, uh, you know, on, on one hand, you know, like in my mind, you know, I'm going through like a lot of people are going, you know, dealing with their, um, you know, housing situation and housing, possibly, you know, the, you know, losing my house, that sort of thing. Um, and in my mind, you know, even my kids say, you know, don't worry about it. You know, it's just you and your, you know, you got a big old house and it's just you and my mom. We're gone and we're on our way. That's right. Don't let the house, you know, stress you out and get, and get mom stressed out, you know because she's getting ill and stuff like that. And in my mind, I'm like, and I tell them, well, it's not the house, it's not that big deal. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, all of a sudden, my body is like, you know, a few weeks ago, they thought I had a, was having a mild stroke in, yeah. and, I, and, they, and uh, it was, they just told me, when they ran all the tests and everything, they said, okay, you, you know, you're not having a stroke. And, uh, but it's anxiety brought on. All these symptoms of the left arm, you know. Yes, and, sir. Uh, uh, tingling in the mouth and, um, and, and all that. And, um, and I could see it, but in my mind, I'm, I can say, you know, I'm not worried about losing, you know, losing my <coughs> house. But God is showing me that that's not true. Yeah. That uh, I've made, things my God right and then um, and then I'm a liar in a sense that um, you know again I have anger because a situation happened you know to my wife a couple of days where her boss yelled at her and denied her she was got sick on the job and he told her to go back and sit down clock back in sit down and stay to the end of your shift mm -hmm. and he yelled at her and he told her I'm ordering you to do it and when she came home and told me you know, I was thinking about, all of a sudden I got these thoughts about, you know, seeing the guy at work and walking up to him, you know, and just letting him have it. That's um, an anger personality. I had thoughts about, you know, you know, following this guy home and, you know, just do something, you know, yes, or sir. confronting him in some kind of physical way. Yes, sir. But, but uh, the blessing is, is that at least I see, I, I, I could see it. You know, like, because I'm meditating, and I could see it, and at the same, and I can see that that's, that's, that's uh, outrageous. I mean, yeah. those thoughts are just, are just outrageous. That's not who I want to be. Yeah. You know, that's not the direction I want to go in. And, uh, and that's all I wanted to say is that God is, you know, that little bit of space there is showing me, and it's what's going on with my body is real. And, and I started to even resent 
you know, I could see that, okay, I'm, I'm stressed, but I started to even resent, resent what's happening to me physically, but I can't That's do right. nothing about it. It's like I'm a slave to, I got this underground, under, underlying hate and resentment and judgment toward almost everything. That's right. And then, and, and my body, you know, and I'm hoping that, you know, I don't like stroke out, you know, <laughs> before I learn to just, I gotta really let go. I, it's yeah. not like, people say, oh, don't worry about it, just let it go. I'm, I'm thinking, no. that's, man, I, I, that's a preposterous that you're saying that because I wish I could do just what you just said, yeah. but the honest God truth is my body and everything else is telling me that it, right now is showing me. God is showing me that, you know, I can't do it, and I just gotta like suffer for a while or, yeah, that's or, right. until I'm just tired of hanging on to, to resentment and hate and judgment. That's all I want to say. That's an amazing story. And just to add, if you want to die soon, then become stay angry. Really, you'll die early because it will affect. Uh, uh, it will bring out all kind of stuff: stress, heartache. I mean, heart disease, chest cancer, pain. chest pain. Your body starts shaking, feel like worms up and down. I mean, all kind of stuff. So if you want to die soon, stay angry. It will kill you because it's up his father and the devil. It will absolutely bring you down because you're not a free person. You know, you're stressed out with the wrong spirit. But you're absolutely right, man. And one last thing, too. I just wanted to say this. It's helping me to see that because I, I know where I got it from because I was raised in a house with my mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. And they took, they took pride in the fact that, you know, in the old days, they, you know, they, they shot their husband. Well, my grandmother shot her husband with a shotgun with salt, rock salt. And, they, and it would, you know, my great-grandmother would tell the story and laugh. And it was just a lot of judgment Amazing. in the house. And I know, and my mother, of course, held on to judgment to the day she died. Uh, but uh, it's in me. And um, it's, it's there, and I can't, I can't, like, just think it away. It's got to, I got to, like, you know, it's got to suffer. You got to be born thing, again. But it, because of that, it's showing me also not to, to one, stay away from any, you know, st stay away from anger. And then also, I see other people. Like, I all of a sudden was telling my wife, that guy, he yelled at you and everything like that. But you know what? Think about it, you know. He's he's acting out. He he's acting out anger or whatever yeah. the it's, it's, it's that was put it that's in him. So it's not him. Okay. That's act. Don't you know? We can't be mad at him. The fact that he did that, like make it personal. It's it's another it's thing in personal. him because I can see that it's in me. You know, that's all I wanted to say. On that. And the thing about it is, you're not mad about the situation. You see the right kind of action to take. Because there are situations, things that happen to you, you need to do something about it. But if you stay calm, you will clearly see what to do. And then it works out perfectly for you. But if you're angry, the devil starts speaking to you right away in your head. Look at what they're doing to you. I can't believe it. Uh, whatever it says to you. And now you want to go that way with that stuff. And it only ends up destroying you. You bring on more problems to yourself rather than getting over the problems. That's why you got, you know, anger is not something that you can control or manage. You have to be born out of it. You have to be born again into the light because it is a spirit. It's an ego. It's the nature of the devil that has made a home in you. And the worst thing, the worst thing, there are many worses, <laughs> but this is at the top of the list as far as worst thing is for boys and girls to be raised by mothers with no fathers. It's the worst thing that can happen to you. It is absolutely the worst thing that can happen to you. It's to be raised by a woman with no father in their home or a father who is weak, who is giving in to his woman. It set you up to suffer in life. They spend 18 of our years of our lives screwing us up and we spend the rest trying to overcome it. Isn't that amazing? And this thing about these women having these children out of wedlock and not married and the, and the entertainers and movie stars are acting like it's all fancy and Madonna running around the country adopting these little black babies, I am not impressed with that. Kids need fathers. They need good fathers. They need men who love what's right more than they love anything else. That's what they need. And this is not 
is not attracted that these women are intentionally having these children out of wedlock because they're 30 and 40 and 50 years old. You know, if you ever had no baby by 50, you got to better having a baby anyhow. But definitely don't have one if you're not married. It's, it's a spiritual battle that's going on, and this thing that's working through these women is being passed down to every generation. And you're right, that's what's happened to you. Your mother and your grandmother and her mama set you up to suffer the rest of your life. And they had already wiped your father out. That's why he wasn't there. You know, he's already a little coward running around making babies with somebody else. No man is in him at all. All girl. It's a spiritual battle. And we're set up in childhood to suffer. It has nothing to do with being black or being white. It's, there, it's, it's a battle between good and evil. And once you're born again, you start to see that, and no one can deceive you and make you think that it's a black and white thing. It's good versus evil. It's the God that you serve. Whomever you serve, that's who controls you. Isn't that amazing? But the good thing about it, you could be born out of it. You can be born into the light, into peace. And God wants you to have it now. He doesn't want you to wait until you die. He wants you to live now because you don't know what's going to happen when you die. I hear all these people saying, I know I'm going to heaven. I went down to the front of the church and I confessed Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I know I'm going to heaven. They have no clue where they're going. That's the devil lying to them then. And then they had a funeral and the preacher get up there and lied to them. I know Sister Joan going to heaven. I know Brother Mac is in heaven. He have no idea where Brother Mac is. Brother Matt made me looking up there asking for some ice water or something. <laughs> and he told my brother, if you want to hear some good lying, go to a funeral. You can hear some good lies. Uncle Joe was a good man. I love Uncle Joe. And then when Uncle Joe was living, you hated to see Uncle Joe coming. He was a liar, a drunk, a cheating on, on his wife. And you lie and talk about you love Uncle Joe. All in the name of Jesus. The world is so messed up, folks. People are suffering unnecessarily. You really are. You don't have to suffer like this. But you got to overcome anger. You got to forgive in your heart so you can go free. Um, I, I saw some. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, I'm, uh, you heard about, uh, you heard so about, about the waves of massacres and uh, violence and not... Uh, uh, happening in this country, and not just on the police, uh, on the police themselves. It says if those who commit those ma uh, massacres uh, and put uh, put on their pedestal, uh, put on them the pedestal of hate, uh, hate they shoot. It's <coughs> it's as if they want uh, want hatred to be their god. Yeah. Like uh, like any other emotion, fear, uh, fear, ra uh, raised uh, grief, uh, grief, uh, indulgence. It seems like people want all sorts of emotions to be, to be their God to guide them from their problems. They can't help it because of anger. Mm -hmm. That's why you, when you lay down anger, you lay down all those emotions, up and down kind of stuff, feel good, feel bad, feel good, violent, and then love you, and then hate you. You lay it down and you don't live that way anymore. I was looking at, um, I had the opportunity to see, um, what's the name of that show that come on right now? Uh, is, uh, when they're singing and they're trying to win. Oh, American Idol. American Idol, right? This is a guy named Simon that's on there, right? Simon Grove. And he just tell you the truth. You know, they go down the line after the person perform, and then you have this black guy and, a, and Paula, another woman and Paula and then Simon. She's and a so they, they go down the line, and the black guy's like, oh, dude, you great. Yeah, dude, call me. <laughs> and then this woman, <laughs> this woman like, you know, you're just wonderful. I just felt it all in my bones. And then Paula looked like she on drugs or something. That woman looked like she just right at the edge, right? We, somebody, maybe you need to get her a meditation tape or something. Good idea. <laughs> but um, she looks as though she right on the edge. Just, oh, I love it. I just love it. You're so wonderful. And then you get to Simon. He's like, you're a bunch of crap. Go home. This is it. You were no good. It was boring. It was insane. And then they get mad at Simon for telling the truth instead of appreciating that kind of truth. Because if you can accept that kind of truth, you get better in life. 
you get better. But these people who have lied to you coming down the line, those are the ones you love because they lied to you. Isn't that amazing? You don't get better with liars. You get better with people who love you enough to tell you the truth and don't judge you. But they really care about you, so they tell you the truth. That's how you get better. But I bet you there's not even 10 people in this room that love people who love the truth. You love liars. Everybody around, you lie to you. You don't love people who tell you the truth. You love people who lie to you. And then if the person come along and tell you the truth, that become your enemy. Isn't that amazing? Lie to me. Tell me sweet little lies. Yes, sir. I wanted to speak to this gentleman about his, um, him, his confession of being angry and, 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 um, and, uh, a liar. and a liar, right. That the worst mistake you can make after, when you see this is to be disappointed because disappointment is like a false holiness about what you see and it will keep you in that. Yeah. And people get very nervous when they're not angry about the sins they commit, the sins of anger and the sins of um, uh, lying and all the other sins that come from it. And then they get disappointed in themselves and they think that that is uh, the right holy attitude to have. But and that's another trap. That is, that is such a good point. Yeah, that is anger um, reinventing itself through holiness, you know, through a false holiness, which is uh, extreme disappointment in yourself. And you go around with this mournful face of how bad I am and I know it. And, and all that does is lead you into more of it and more of it. Whereas if you treat it like, a, like, like the atheists do, you know, the ones who, nothing is wrong, ha, 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 you know, and... Um, Nothing they do is wrong, and they have this ha-ha attitude. If you can have that same attitude, but just know that you're wrong, where you're not disappointed, but you just see that you're wrong, then you're on your way. You will get over it. Very powerful point. Count it all joy when you see that you're a liar, a dishonest person, and, and don't judge yourself again about it. You will go free. It's a joy to see that in yourself. It's not a bad thing. It is not something that you hold on to with a sense of pride. It's just you see it. And then you shall go free. All you know? I see is destroying me. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, uh, and any thoughts after, after the fact, like, he, like Martin was saying, that's just another trap. It, yeah. it, it reinvents itself, perpetuates the situation, and then you thinking that you're getting better. <coughs> you know, you, but, but there's just more thoughts telling you that. Yeah. And it's the thoughts that are the lie to begin with. So I, Every I thought that you get, every thought you get, whether it's a good thought or a so-called bad thought or a so-called good thought, everyone is a lie. You never, ever, 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 never, never, ever have a true thought. You've never had one. And if anybody tell you that you have, they're lying to you. Now, if anybody disagree with that, anybody want me to elaborate on that? Because that's a big word now. Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to spell it. <laughs> it's spelled just the way it sounds, that one. Elaborate. You know, um, I do have a question about that in a sense. Um, you have never had a true thought. The world teaches that... You think about the people you met, you meet, and you, you thought, hey, oh, this is a good person. Thank God for this one. And then a week later, you're like, wow. You know, and you thought it was a good person. And it seemed like a good person. But a week later, it's not a good person. You wonder, how did that happen? You, you had that happen to you? Oh, yeah. yeah. It just seemed like... This morning? This morning? I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen because I set myself up for it. Yeah, for so what? Said, for this person to let me down. Oh, so you got what you deserve. <laughs> shame on you the first time, shame on me the second time. That's right. But see, the thing is, like, the anger, I promised myself that I wasn't going to get angry because I already knew what was going to happen. So I said, okay, I'm going to pray on it, and boom, just let it go. Let it go by the wayside. And were you able to let it go? Yes, I'm here. You didn't get angry about it? No. Good. I saw the person again this morning that I knew that was going to let me down. Yeah. And they came up with the this, that, and that. And I was like, okay. 
Let I'm telling you guys, every thought, it, it's best to have a wait and see attitude. No thought about it. Just a wait and see attitude. The wait, well, I'll come back to that in a minute. Yes, sir. You know, I was listening to you saying that before you went on the show, you had all these thoughts about what to say. Did, did, weren't most of those thoughts like seem to be helpful? You know, like, 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 you know how they say when you, before you do anything, you should prepare right. for it. You know, you should prepare, and they even say, you know, prepare to what to say and all that stuff. So these thoughts are coming to you, and some of them actually seem to be good suggestions. Do they not? <laughs> that seemed to be, but it's a lie. Yeah. And you're right, Ermis and I, he's my PR director, right? And so he and I go over the topics. They say, okay, here are the topics I want you guys to deal with, right? So we'll go over the topics, you know, we get the meat of the topic, and that's it. But you're still not, and then the thoughts start telling you, once you go over the topics, it tells you, okay, they're going to talk about pornographic and how they're showing it in schools now. And you should say that that's wrong. And that's this and that's that. And those, it's true. It's wrong. It's that and that, right? But the thoughts have no clue as to what the question is going to be when you get on the stage. Or it doesn't know what God will have you to say about the situation. So if you prepare and remember the answers, now you're on the set trying to just stick in with what you learn and, and, and prepare for, and you end up looking silly because it has nothing to do with the conversation that's really going on. And it doesn't bring life and it doesn't add to anything because you've shut down for, from truth coming in and show you how to deal with it. And you have patent answers or just shallow, empty answers because you prepare for the devil. It brings no life. And you may get on, this, on there and the person asks you something else and you're already stuck in a mode about what you're going to say and now you're still trying to squeeze your, your plan into what is being said. It's best to let that stuff go and be free. Because those thoughts set you up too, even though they seem like they're true, but they're not true for the moment. And that's the setup. It's uh, all lies. Never, ever, ever, ever trust your thoughts. Do not be friends with them at all. It's your enemy. Do not keep company with thoughts. That explanation does make perfect sense because a lot of times I will come in with, a, with an answer that I have learned and then they'll throw me back an objection to that yes. that I haven't learned an answer for. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'm like, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yes, sir. It's yeah. best to be open like that uh, satellite thing so information can come and put it out there. Um, I, when they got to this question about um, they, um, they are showing sex films in schools, it, it occurred to me right in that moment why they were doing it. The host said, why, why do you think they're doing this? I said, to corrupt the kids so that they can become Democrats when they're old enough to vote. They vote for the Democrats. They're going to vote for same-sex marriage. They're going to vote for abortion because they've already been corrupted at such an early age and now they identify with corruption. Wrong seem right. Now, if I had pre-planned what I was going to say, that answer would not have come because I wasn't open to receive. And then you gotta move fast. You see how fast those shows move? You don't have time to be thinking about what you're gonna say. And then that answer actually caused that woman to confess that she was corrupt. I know, she admitted she, she was. She threw it out as a joke, but her mouth, <laughs> mouth the words, I'm corrupt. I'm telling you, it's a free way of living. And that's what you need. That's the way Christ lived. You don't have to learn all this stuff. You don't have to pre-plan your life. Just do what you can do right now. Yes, sir. Um, I see that working, trying to work in my mind like it's, what you're talking about is living by faith and the, the substitute faith is always there. Like, maybe not always, but it's, it's what Martin's saying. It's, it's there, it's, it's, like, it's like masquerading as the truth, but it's just giving you the thoughts. Yes. And it doesn't have the spirit there. And it is always tempting you. It's out there trying to get in and right. deceive you. And it's tricky because it does play like the light. You know? Yeah. But you know when it's verbal and words in your head, it's not because the light doesn't act that way. It just gives you in the moment. It doesn't it give it It sounds to like you. You hear your own voice. Right. It looks like you. It feels like you. So it must be right. Right. That's yeah. That, I, think. I think that's its sneakiest way with us that it, it plays like us. We, it, think, it tries to make us think it's us. Yeah, and uh, they tell you, you're shy. You know, you walk up on stage, 
and say, you're a shy person. Look how they're going to look at you. And you think that's true because you hear your voice telling you that. Now you're going to freak out and act shy because you're convinced that that's how people are seeing you. People got problems. They don't have... <laughs> I wish you could really understand how messed up people are. And then you'll feel silly about caring about what they think about you, trying to please them. You know, people got issue. I mean, just issue, issue, issues. And they're getting worse because they're getting so far away from God. And so their issues are even worse nowadays. Dishonest, I mean, it's amazing how people just lie. I wanted to say also, the thing that really helped me a lot with the anger is when I came here and I admitted that, yeah, I enjoyed the anger. I was getting something out of it. That helped a lot to just admit it, not judge myself for it. But that's, that was the truth. I mean, I was getting, I think people, you know, you get an energy source from that anger. Yeah. You get something out of it. And when you just see that and know it's wrong, it, it'll, it'll depart. If you want to be free, you must be born again. You never want to be free any other way. You got to lay down that pride, that nature of the devil, which is your pride, that anger, which is the nature of the devil, your resenting pressure, which is the nature of the devil, your hating people because they're not perfect, your re that's the nature of the devil, your uh, whatever it is. It's the nature of the devil. It's the pride. It's this nature. And you got to die from that. You're never going to be able to live until you can forgive. You cannot live, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven, which is perfect love, until you can forgive. Not with words, but in your heart. You need that spirit taken away from you. That other, there's a thing that lives inside of you, and it's made a home inside of you, and it lives there controlling you. And it feels like you, it talks like you, it walks like you, but it's not you, it's something inside of you. It's really a spirit a personality inside of you, and it works on your mind. Yes, Richard? Um, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. You ever heard that statement before? If you're not angry, you're not paying attention? Yes. I've not heard it, but I wouldn't be surprised by it. Okay. And what is righteous anger? What is righteous anger? Yes. Are you asking me that? Yes. Oh, good. Good question. This young man want to tell you. <laughs> Anthony. Anthony. Anthony, want to tell you. Thank you, Mom. I'm going to get angry. Are we taking the heat off? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. Okay. The phone number, if you want to call, is 800 411 2663. 800 411 Bond. Also, you can email church at bondinfo.org. Anthony, want to tell you. Okay. What is righteous anger? Are you a Christian, Anthony? Yes, I am. You're a Christian. So what is righteous anger? <clears throat> What's right in the sight of God's eye, <clears throat> what what he dislikes, what he don't what he feels is is corrupt, filth. And what does he feel uh, is corrupt and filth? The world. I'm sorry? The world. The world. Mm -hmm. oh. And so righteous anger is what wrong in the sight of God, you say? That's what I said. Uh, do you have righteous anger or uh, unrighteous anger? I do, but what I do, I find it within myself. I'm sorry? It starts, if I do something wrong, and I know it's wrong, it's, it's bad in, in God's eye, right. that's me. I did it. That was my sin against him. Right. So you have unrighteous anger? Yeah. You do? Sometimes, yeah. And it's inside of you? Yeah. And how did you become that way? Uh, association. Association of uh, people. Uh, of um, situations in life. So Try to run away. Run away from things that should be should face them head on instead of running away. Yeah. yeah. So your association with people cause you to become an unrighteous person, a person with unrighteous well, anger. Well, it makes it more easier to talk. To talk. And how yeah. did they make you that way? Yeah. What did they do to make you become that way? 
Well, they didn't make. I led myself to that to that point and where they where they were at. But how did where you come that way? Just simply being with him. Mm, just not lying. Just lying to myself, basically. Lying to myself, so I want to be. I rather be around people that do the things I do. You say if I if I'm going to do some put it like this. If I'm going to do dope, like I'm going to do dope, I'd rather do dope with people that do dope. Um, I can't do dope with people that's, or Christians that don't, that's filth to them. You know what I'm saying? Why can't you do dope with a person that don't do dope? Uh, they wouldn't tolerate it. They wouldn't tolerate it? No. I, if they're do, Christians. Would you feel uh, funny doing dope around a person that's not doing dope with you? Oh, yeah, that's like doing dope in front of my mother. You can't do dope in front of her? Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> Were you raised by your father and mother or mother? My mother. Where's your dad? Oh, New York City. Do you know him? I vaguely. And you love him? Uh I res I say I respect him. Do you love him? I respect him. Do you love your dad? No. You don't love him then? And why not? Wasn't there. And why wasn't he there? Uh, I guess he was weak. Why wasn't he there? Why wasn't he? That I can't answer. Why don't you ask him? Uh, I, have ne I never had that opportunity. Why don't you go and do it? You know where he is, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't know how to find him at all? Do you know his people at all? I, th that part of my family been cut off a long time ago. You don't even know any of your dad's people at all, so you don't know how to find him. Yeah. Um, so if you don't love your dad, how is it that you're a Christian? How did you become a Christian without loving your dad? Well, you were your dad's very true. I, I forgive. I forgive, I forgive, but there's always a little, I'm human. I'm just human. So you, know, you I, haven't forgiven because you don't love him. Is that true? It's true. It's yeah. true. And so, is it possible you may not be a Christian because you have not loved your dad? Because you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven and say you love God. Have you ever seen God? I felt him. But you never seen him. No, but I felt and so, him. how how do you think that you're going to enter into the kingdom? You enter into the kingdom of heaven, hating your father, of whom you never seen. I mean, hating your father who is here on earth with you and. And say that you love God, you never seen God. No. Yeah. I believe one there'll be a coming time. Everything meant to be meant to be. I will see him one day. Yeah. And we and we will talk. I would ask my mother about his family mm. and I would go and find his family and then find him and have a conversation with him so you can understand what happened. So you can forgive your father and go free. Mm. Because you're never gonna be a free man. Resenting your father. He represents God on earth. He's a bad representation of Psalm, but he still represents him. And then you have to forgive your mother for not making it possible for you to see your dad. She should have made that happen if at all possible. And forgive her for being impatient with you and controlling you and causing you to become frustrated and opening you up to the world. You got to forgive her. You got to stand up to her and let your anger toward her go. Is that hard to do? No. Can you stand up and deal with your mother? Yes. Are you sure? What do you need to forgive her for? What has she done that gets on your nerve and you wish she didn't do it to you? She's very, uh, I don't want to say bullheaded, but, uh, bullheaded? She's very, uh, Strong-minded, and if it's not her way, it's the highway. Yeah. But there's a love, there's love, but she only going, she not going to show you that. It's a shell, but she's a lot of love. But she just, she have rights. In, in a way, I know I done wrong. But she said you know, she up sees to do it. Wrong. She sees it. She said she has to She has to do wrong. wrong. She said right. you up to do wrong, and then she judged you for doing wrong. Well, that's why she's mad. I'm sorry? That's why I get better. Yes, sir. That's that right 
that right there. Yeah. And I'm saying I'm trying. Well, you show me a little more love. Show me a little love. <coughs> hug me sometimes. You know, kiss me on my head. That goes a long way. Yeah. How old are you now? I'm 45. 45, and you still need a kiss on the head from your mother. Yes, I, I understand what you're saying. Yes, I, I totally understand. But what you need to realize, your mother don't have a, she's evil through and through. She does, she hate men, she hate her mother, she hate life, she hate herself, and she's in denial about it. And that's why she destroyed her children. And so to pretend that she has love when it's not there is only hurting you. You got to see reality and forgive her Speak the truth to her about it, but forgive her because she can't help herself. She doesn't have love to give. If she had it, she would give it. She's all hate, hatred, all anger. And as long as you hate her for it, you're going to be just like her. You got you to gotta forgive her. I, I, I forgive her. No, you haven't. Not yet. You got to talk to her the same way we have just spoken and say, Mom, I realize you can't help yourself. I realize you don't have love, and I'm sorry for hating you for it. And then you would no longer have that, that need for her to kiss you on the forehead. You would kiss her on her forehead because she needs love. She doesn't have it. You're going to have to become like a father to her. But you can't do it until you overcome her spirit. Her identity has made a home inside of you. Yeah, you know how she feels, you know how she thinks, because you're her, you become a woman. You got that woman's spirit inside of you. And when you forgive her, realize that she can't help you, God will take it away and give you your true identity. <coughs> it will absolutely leave you when you forgive your mother. And don't tiptoe around her, you got to go to her and deal with her. If she starts screaming, just look at her screaming like looking at a movie. If she starts crying, just look at her as though you're looking at a movie and you just say, Mom, I just want to say I'm sorry for hating you. I realize now you can't help yourself. And just from that day forward, be honest with her and you'll get better. That's your freedom right there. That makes sense? Yes, it And that's why your dad left her. He couldn't have her either. Because his mother set him up and he ended up with your mother, who was just like his mother. And every woman you get involved with is going to be mama. Because you become attracted to the thing you hate the most. And you try to get away from it, but you're still attracted to it. And it's not going to change until you overcome that spirit inside of you. By truly, truly realizing your mother is this same. She's of her father, the devil, all in the name of Jesus. But she has no love. That makes sense? And then you'll be free, and then you can love her by being honest with her. All right? And don't plan it. And don't expect anything from her. If she fall out and die, will you tell her the truth? Just look around for the insurance papers. <laughs> have a little cheap box kind of a funeral. And take the rest of the money and go live your life. All right? That's what all men are going through. Mama. They're trying to overcome the nature of mom. And, and all women. That makes sense? Yeah. Anything that I've said that you disagree with about that? No, you don't know. I'm sorry? You don't know. Yeah. That's the key to your freedom. You gotta forgive mama. Yeah. And don't pretend like mama have love. She doesn't have love. Mama turned her kids into drug addicts, alcoholics, whores, prostitutes, criminals. And she sit back and say, oh, the father did it. The father not even around. <laughs> the father did it. Blaming it on somebody else. She did it. When you were subject to her as a child. Isn't that right, Austin? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. It was funny. I had a preacher on my show uh, this week. And we were talking about the man and woman relationship and how this thing works. And so I said to the preacher, I said, would you ever allow your wife to become a preacher? Oh, yeah. My wife is a preacher. I encourage her. Her, her mother is a preacher. I, I like it. I encourage it. I said, well. His mother. His mother is a preacher. That's right. His mother is a preacher. I said, well, explain this to me. It was the woman who took the man away from God. What made you think she's going to give him back to God? How is that going to work? 
And he said, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, okay, let's break it down. I said, is it true that Adam had a relationship with God and the woman had a relationship with Adam who had a relationship with God? Yes. And he quoted some scriptures to back that up. And I said, then, is it true that the deceiver came along, the serpent came along, and deceived the woman? He told the woman, you know what? You don't have to listen to Adam. He just, he's a woman hater. He's manipulated. He's just trying to control you. You could be like Adam. And after a while, the woman believed a lie, and this serpent became her God. And then Adam went back, and then she went back and deceived Adam, and now the woman is his God, and the serpent is her God, and don't we have that going on now? And he admitted, yeah, then he denied it again. He said, what did he say, Hermes? He said some kind of stuff to deny it. But he quoted the scriptures about it, and then he denied it. Well, he tempted the woman. I'm like, he did more than tempt her. She believed that lie and fell for it, and it's working today. And so how do you tell women that their father is the devil? How do you tell them that, Melissa? How should I tell women that their father is the devil? Did you know that? You knew that the devil was a woman's father? Oh, he was, yeah. I could see the lie. <laughs> Ooh, no. Yeah. Men yeah, know it. Yeah. Women deny it. Yeah, they with me. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah. I see the lie. That's why your mother and these women that you've been involved with? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. They like to, they want to be leaders. <laughs> I, have a, I have a saying, I can't say it here, but they have a part of, they, there's an anatomy that we have, they think they have. And they, they, you know what I mean? I see you guys don't have that. But I'm like, these men that cater to them, they, they make them that way. That's right. They put them and on I the can't mom. understand that. Yeah. You guys don't have that. We yeah. have that. Yeah. I'm not going to follow you. That's right. You know the I mean? problem is, uh, you got to overcome mama so you can guide them in the right way. As long as you're subject to them, then they are going to lead you. they just pull you by the nose. But when you overcome mama, then they will follow you. They'll come kicking and screaming, but they're coming. They'll follow you. But they're not going to follow you in your fallen nature. With that mama spirit in you. You've got to be born again. Women are subject to men who are born again. And they hate men who are not. A woman who has overcome the devil, love being a follower of her husband. She loves not, she doesn't even, she's not even in competition to be a leader because she knows it's not in her nature. It doesn't even bother her because she's not on an ego trip anymore. And so when she's born again, she loved being a woman. She loved having a good man. She loved having children. She loved having her husband go out there and provide because there's nothing in her anymore that would want to compete against her husband because her pride is now dead. She doesn't have it. She's not against the man anymore. Isn't that a good question though? If the woman took the man from God, what makes us think she's going to bring him back? You ever thought about that? No. But isn't that food, good food for thought? Yeah, it is. But I can't hear you. But. <laughs> <laughs> But. No, I, I mean, I hadn't thought about it in that way before because I was thinking that uh, because of salvation, because of, of the cross, that's not the case. But if I hear you correctly, you're saying that before a person is born again, that that's their nature. Yes. Okay, fine. And so, the women, I haven't met a woman yet. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. You guys hear me? I'm not saying it doesn't exist. But I haven't met a woman yet that has taken a uh, point of man to God. Let him go and let God guide him. Now I've met a whole truckload of them that pretended that they're doing it. And as soon as that man stopped paying them attention, they go off. You cheated on me. You just love the Lord more you love me. You know? <laughs> you're in that Bible more you're into me. They pretend that they turned them over to God, but they lied. I haven't met one yet that have... Um, Return the man back to God. Anybody ever met a woman that's done that? Nope. <laughs> Ozzie, you haven't met one. Turn a man back to God. Gave him back to God. Uh-uh. Uh, I can't answer that, but I have some, <laughs> I have some thoughts about that, but I'm leaving it alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, have you ever met a woman that turned a, turned a man back to God? Said, okay, you don't need to pay attention to me. Love was right. No. Uh, she didn't say you cheated. You no. Love church. You love the Lord more than you love me. I can't believe it. I brought you to the Lord and now you're going to ignore me? I don't think I have a problem with a man led by God. And I, <laughs> I hope God will give me the sight, insight to know this man by, led by God. I will follow him all the way. But to me, we don't have no men <laughs> like that today. But you can't make that determination, even though it's true. What? Because a woman. You. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a woman would tell you, I want you to be a God man, but you got to be uh, based on her ideas of it. So. Now, you got to be a Not God me. man, but don't stay at church too long. <laughs> no. Don't work too hard. Pay me attention. You know, blah, blah, blah. You got to be on her grounds. You know what I mean? And that's not setting you free. Yes. Yeah. But if it, it's a woman that's born again, then that's not the truth, then, is it? <laughs> if she's truly born again, no, you're right. She, she wouldn't have had that battle going on. But show me one that's born again, and I'll eat my hat. So you're saying there's no born again women and there's no born again men? No, I don't know. I'm just joking. <laughs> You're getting all nervous, huh? No, I just want to know the truth and it should set me as free. That's right. There you go. All right, um, Irving, you got your hand. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing, that you'd have to follow her definition of what a man of God was. Yeah. She's still determining how she wants you to be. Yeah. Let's and document this, you know. First of all, how do you know a man is out? And here's what I want you to do. Read Genesis this week. The whole book of Genesis, and you will see what's happening. It's all laid out there. Read it with an open eye, an open heart, and you will see it's laid out right there. If you understand that book alone, you, you don't even need to buy me anymore. Because it lays out what happened. It really is just right there. It is, it's a spirit, though. It's not personal. It's not men against women or women against men. It's a spiritual thing going on. Our battle is a spiritual battle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirits and principalities and wickedness in high places. It's spiritual. It's not what I just said is true. The woman took the man away from God. And she worked overtime now to keep it that way. She works overtime. You could be laying up sleep. And she got her eyes open. <laughs> and you're just smiling, and she's thinking, I wonder why he's resting like that. <laughs> I wonder who he was with today. <laughs> he's all happy in his sleep. And the devil working overtime, she's not going back to sleep at all that night. And going to wake up frustrated the next morning, and you wake up with a smile. <sighs> why were you resting like that last night? Where did you go? <laughs> Like what, honey? You were all sleeping. I'm up all night. She's up all night because the devil got her awake. He's spoken to her and she's believing a lie. You can't sleep when the devil speaks to you. Have you noticed that? When you're mad at somebody, it's hard to sleep. But that's what she does. And she she wakes up the next morning. He wakes up and she's already mad. And he wonders, how can you go to bed? And we haven't even gotten out of bed yet. And we already have problems. But she's <laughs> listening to the devil while sleeping. That's why you got to overcome anger. You got to lay it down so you don't have to deal with that. So if your husband or, or wife is out all night long, and you'll lay there and sleep like a virgin and can care less about it. And, and she come home late and you want to know, what happened to you last night? You know, and, but women will stay up all night long. Oh, I was so worried about you. <laughs> what are you worried for? If you're if you dead, he's already dead. If you're in the hospital, the hospital will call you and say, oh, your husband in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing you can do but they lie to themselves. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't know if I should say this. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes says, says uh, he says, he's the, you know, he's the King David's son. He's the ruler and all this uh, nations and stuff. He says, he says, I have, a seat. I, I ha I have uh, in my hand, in my one hand, I can point out to the good man that I have met. And in my close hand, I can, I've met, I can tell you the woman that I've met. 
<laughs> yeah. He said that he could count on his hand the good men he met, men he met, but he could close his hand and count the number of good women he met. That's funny. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to uh, comment on uh, the question that Richard asked about righteous anger. Oh yeah, we didn't get back to that. I'm I sorry can, about I that. I can tell you, I, I. Um, uh, I have an idea of what it is, but then I know that I don't know it. But I can tell you that I know what unrighteous anger is because I live with that and I raised my kids with it uh, all the way up to the time they left the, left home. And that is, and you helped me with it, and still I'm still to this day I'm not through with it. Yeah. Uh, it is, you know, being angry, seeing something that's you think is wrong uh, based on information or your upbringing. I don't know, but. But doing it in that anger, you know, with anger, like yeah. uh, that, that's what I, I've done all, all along, yeah. and, I, and I still right now I'm learning. I got grandkids and stuff like that, and and I think in my mind, okay, with them I'm not going to make the same mistake with my kids that I did with the anger. But I see the rehearsing of the thoughts, yeah. and then even when I'm dealing with them, I'm I'm like, okay, don't hit your brother. I can feel like I'm. It feels like I'm struggling to. To just do that, I mean, but I can still, I can, I'm still angry. You know, yeah. there's a, I don't know how to correct without anger. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. And I do so. you, um, do you do the prayer? Yes. Okay, you're doing it night and day. Yes. Every day and night. Yes. Every, Especially every since, and I hate to, I hate to say it, but uh, you know, with all the pain that I've been going through and suffering. <laughs> So yeah. like you just all of a sudden just wake <laughs> up and um, you just and I, and I'm hoping and I'm praying that you know that uh, it's because it, like even in your meditation you say you know the problem is people when they get pain they start to pray then yeah. after the pain everything and everything gets starts happening and, and, and that's been my my history yeah. you know in a, the 15 or 20 years that I've been uh, well you know hearing uh, when things get seemingly better. Well, then there goes my prayer. So I'm, I'm praying that God will help me this time and uh, make me really realize that's all that really matters because I can't that's do anything right. about it and I really got to learn how to let go and really not care and really, you know, not care about the physical things, you know, that are happening. Yes, you know, sir. Uh, you know, Man, material you and get physical. To that point? So I'm praying. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm, I'm hope, I hope I, that Can you time's imagine coming. living a life where nothing bothers you? Nothing matters. Isn't that amazing? That's even possible. Isn't it? But you can live a life where nothing matters. And yet, you deal with issues in life. I can see it. I can see it, but I haven't gotten it. You haven't gotten it. But I'm a living witness. You can do it. Don't I sound like one of the living witness? You can absolutely live a life where nothing matters. It's just not in you anymore. It's just not there. But you have to, you know, you make a good point. A lot of people sit and they pray. And as soon as they start to feel better, they stop. And because I've seen people do that, and I see the trip that they go through as a result of doing that, there's nothing in me that will cause me to not pray, even with perfect peace. Because I know that's how I got it. And I can't imagine going away from it, but I see how people fall away from it when they don't pray. And so I stay with prayer because of that. You know, so if that's what brought it for me, why should I give up what brought it to me, you know? So I pray no matter how tired I am, how much I travel, even if I'm on the airplane, I'll just sit there and do it and then fall asleep. But I make sure I'm praying. You should never turn away from prayer because it's a connection to your spiritual father. It's like your earthly father, when he turned away from you as a child, he leaves you open. You feel that something is missing. But that's what happens when you stop communicating with your spiritual father. You're not open for evil to come in and overtake you. Yeah. Freeman, tell him what unrighteous anger is. Uh, you're talking to me, sir? Maybe. Oh. oh, unrighteous anger is is hate. It's uh, it's a, like playing God. It's getting into the feeling of kind of punishing the, what what you see rather than just seeing it and being patient with it. And um, it's Jay, not. Do you want to add to that real fast? I only have about thirty seconds left. What is unrighteous anger? You talking to me? I don't know. James. Well, you have any favorite in James? <laughs> He's like, what it is, he really want to answer. So we hear his name.
It is evening. You want to have 30 seconds up here. I think it's just judgmentalism and emotion in it. He can't hear you. It's judgmentalism and emotion and um, I don't know what it is, but I just know what it feels like. That's what you have unrighteous anger? Yeah. You feel judgmental and emotional uh, and all that? Yeah. Are you about to cry now? No. Uh, why are you living in the then? <laughs> I don't know. You're really living in the right now. And everybody can see it. <laughs> no, <I'm> <laughs> so what is righteous anger? <laughs> um, what, what is unrighteous anger? Unrighteous anger is that anger that you get into that you can feel and it it burns inside you and you and it gives you all the unrighteous thoughts of harm to this person instead of helping this person. What is righteous anger? Righteous anger is is you want to defend um, what's honorable and right and and good in the sight of God without destroying anybody and you don't feel anything from it. What one do you have? Righteous anger. Oh, okay. Um, he's right. Righteous anger is when you see injustice and you don't feel anything about it. And you deal with it. And I'm telling you, you can live that way. When people are cruel to you, they lie on you, they whatever, and whatever. And you just don't feel anything about it, but you see that is wrong and you deal with it. That's what righteous anger is. You don't feel anything about it. It's impossible to feel something about it. It's enough to just see it. And then you're protected from it when you can just see it without feeling it. And, and that's how life is. Life is not about thoughts. It's about seeing. If you can live a life of observation, if you can just see, then you can live. Because God's voice is a voiceless voice. It's not a voice that you hear in your head uh, uh, that talks to you. It's, it just, he allows you to see. He talks to you in that way by allowing you to see. And that's the difference between the devil's voice and God's voice. The devil's voice talks to you. It imitates you. It sounds like the people you hate. God's voice is a voiceless voice. There is no voice. It's a seeing. You just see. That makes sense? Yeah. All right. Um, I want to invite you to uh, go to our website and get a copy of the prayer, Be Still and Know. Um, um, and sit still so that quiet down, calm down, so the truth can catch up with you and change your life. Go to bondinfo.org, bondinfo.org. Get a copy of Be Still and Know. Also, you can email us, radio at bondinfo, no, church at bondinfo.org, church at bondinfo.org, or go to our website uh, at bondinfo.org. And we're on the radio, too, five days a week, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and 9 to noon Eastern Standard Time. Heard around the world by everybody and their mama. You can call in live. Uh, on the internet if you're not getting it by the station, all right? Go to bondinfo.org for more information. Are we out of time? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. <laughs>